everyone. There are three personalities associated with Advent. Well, four if you include Jesus. One in the Old Testament, that's Isaiah. Remember, he was the one who wrote the most about the coming Messiah. Then you have John the Baptist who prepared the people for the imminent coming of Christ. And then you have Mary. Her yes to the angel meant she conceived and carried in her womb the word made flesh, God made man, who was born on Christmas morning. According to the scriptures, the ushering in in the kingdom will bring with it an end to war and conflict. Since many places in the world are not at peace as we speak, it is quite obvious that the words of Isaiah, which were spoken hundreds of years before Christ, have patently not been fulfilled. Are we even halfway? So we have to keep working and praying for it. He's not only talking here about an end to military conflict when he says they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into sickles, etc., but an end to other forms of turmoil and unrest. The turmoil in Ireland associated with the debt crisis, well, they seem to be going from one crisis to another. A year ago or so, it was the clerical scandals and the industrial schools then before that, it was the long drawn out Northern Ireland conflict, which of course is still rumbling. Having said all that, on the paper not very long ago, Ireland was rated as the fifth most desirable place to live in the world. Out of conflict, of course, can come hope and healing. That's the message of Advent. The coming of the kingdom may take place secretly and slowly, but never painlessly. It's like the baby in the womb. It grows slowly but surely, and if you ask any mother, they'll tell you the pain of childbirth is soon forgotten when the newborn arrives. Joy is the result. No wonder one of the Sundays of Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday, and we light the pink candle on that Sunday. Mary said she was filled with joy when she entrusted her life and destiny into God's hands. She said to the angel Gabriel, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me. Thereby entrusting her life and destiny into God's hands. So Advent is the time of the year when we ask God to give us faith like Mary's and to entrust our lives and destiny into his hands we entrust our joys and sorrows, our ups and downs, our successes and failures. I allow Jesus to be Lord of my life, my past, my present and future, Lord of my time, Lord of my treasures, Lord of my heart. Is it my past which is bothering me? If I have confessed big sins in the past, I must let go of them. When our Lord forgives our sins, he dumps them in the deepest lake and a big sign is erected at the spot which says, No fishing. I make Jesus Lord of my past. When we talk about the coming kingdom, when we pray for it in the Our Father, we're not referring to a territory but it is more aptly described as the reign of God. Some of you will remember one of the more popular hymns of the 1980s, Our God Reigns. We were singing it all the time. The question is, have I allowed him to reign over every aspect of my life or does he get a look in at all? Delia Smith, that cookery goddess, she once described in her book, A Feast for Advent, as a journey away from self and towards deeper union with God. How far am I along that road? The serpent, in the book of Genesis, who represents the devil in the Garden of Eden, tempted Adam and Eve to dethrone God and set themselves up in his place. In fact, that is the root of all our sins. 
He tried the same trick on Jesus in the desert by offering him all the kingdoms of the world, but Jesus sent him packing. He said to Adam and Eve, If you unseat God by revolting, then you can take his place, and without reference to him, decide yourselves what is good and evil. We could ask ourselves the question, are the physicians not playing God in the area of stem cell research or in vitro fertilization? While they see things as, as a step forward in this direction, the church sees it as a step backward, away from God. At the beginning of this talk, we spoke about war and conflict in the world, which is the antithesis of God's kingdom. The reason for this is that man, instead of God, wants to be in charge of things down here. Remember once when Jesus tried to soft soap Jesus by urging him to bypass the cross and his father's will, Jesus said, The way you think, Peter, is man's way, not God's. If God and his church say something is wrong and I say it's not wrong, guess who's right? So Advent can be a grace-filled time when I call time on my arrogance. There is nothing which disarms the devil more than humility, but in a godless world it is often seen as a weakness. John the Baptist, who appears from nowhere on the second Sunday of Advent, is an icon of humility. He said, The man who is coming after me ranks before me, and I am not fit to untie his sandal strap. He must increase, and I must decrease. How self-effacing can you be? I think one of the reasons why clerical scandal was addressed, wasn't addressed in the past is because clergy were too busy jockeying for the best parishes, which is a far cry from the transparency and unpretentiousness of John the Baptist. When I began my ministry in Sheffield 40 years ago as a mere curate, I don't remember the PP at the time saying to me, You, Father Paddy, must increase. I, the parish priest, must decrease. Actually, quite the opposite. With the curate, his ego expanded all the more. In my view, this is also one of the reasons for a dearth in vocations. A poor gospel witness was given. Christmas, which Advent prepares us for, is the feast of the humility of God himself. The celebrated Carl, come to the manger, puts it beautifully. He leaves all his glory behind to be born and die for mankind. John the Baptist spells it out. Every valley will be filled in. So, is there an emptiness in my life that I'm trying to fill in by pampering myself with material acquisitions which conflicts with what the psalmist says in God alone is my soul at rest and at peace every mountain will be laid low is there a mountain of pride in my life which needs flattening Am I always right in everything? It was well known that the parish priest of old used to say to his curate, Even when I'm wrong, I'm still right, as far as you're concerned. Well, so much for the humility of John the Baptist. And then John says, Make a straight highway for our God. How did the nursery rhyme go? There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. Am I crooked? Or as my father used to say way back years ago in Kilkenny, a contrary person. If so, 
There's no better time than Advent for straightening things out in this area. So then, let's not flitter away the four weeks of Advent this year. Don't put God to the test by bemoaning the hollowness of Christmas if I fail to take Advent seriously or when my mind was more taken up with the number of shopping days to Christmas than grace and prayer-filled days with an inventory of my life thrown in for good measure followed by private confession and gospel reflection. Christ can be reborn at a deeper level in my life this Christmas if I let him. There, he can be allowed to reign over every aspect of my life, my past, my present, and my future. Now, thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh.